Hi guys, I'm back with another video. Um, it looks like a lot has happened since my last video I made about the draft. You should go check that one out. It's pretty interesting. I even ramble a little bit about my favorite team, the Ottawa Senators there, and what I think they should do. That one's a pretty cool uh, video, so I think you guys should check that one out. But as for the news of the day that we're going to get to here, uh, the big story, I, I think, is uh, Matt Niskanen retires from the NHL. He played for the Philadelphia Flyers. He finished out his career here. Uh, he played many seasons in Pittsburgh and he finished, uh, he, before then he had a stint in Washington, a good four or five year stint, where he also won a Stanley Cup. I think uh, his retirement comes as quite a bit of a shock to me. I think Niskanen had a lot of good years left in him. I personally believe, I think he, um, he could be retiring maybe just because of the whole uncertainty with the way the, the, the world's been going. We all know how crazy it's been these last number of months or, or whatever we're at now. Um, he, he could have uh, just retired because of that. I mean, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are guys that have made their money, maybe they've won a cup already, they're, they're maybe early to mid-30s, are they maybe going to start just retiring now just because maybe they, they want to be with their families, they're, they're not sure about this whole situation, are we going to have a bubble next year again? You know, guys that have experienced the bubble, maybe they, they don't like the fact that they have to be away from their family. I understand that would be really tough. I, I personally, as a, if I was a player, I wouldn't want to be away from my family that long, isolated and stuff like that. So maybe that's the case with Niskanen. I'm not sure. But I, I wish him all the best. He uh, seemed like a good, honest player. He, he was a hard worker. And I'm sure uh, he seemed like a guy that all his teammates really liked too. So I wish him all the best going forward in his retired life. As for Philadelphia, they save $5.7 million off the cap, so that definitely helps them. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that cap space here going forward, so that'll be pretty intriguing. Another thing that's intriguing is the Minnesota Wild and the San Jose Sharks seem to have this affinity with trading for each other today, trading players with each other, I should say. Uh, the San Jose Sharks acquired forward Ryan Donato in exchange for a third-round pick in the 2021 entry draft. I think this trade is a very good one for San Jose. They pick up a player who's got loads of potential, I believe. I believe Donato with him, he's a frustrating player because he's, he's got the tools to be good and to be good every night, but it's inconsistency, I think, that's kind of plagued him throughout his, the course of his career so far. So I think if he can do that better uh, and be more consistent, I mean, look, the guy's got the tools. He skates well. He's got an underrated shot. I, I think he can be a good player for them, and uh, I, I really, I really hope it works out because for a guy like that, I mean, I, I'm correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he's he's a young guy. He's 22 or 23, I believe, but he, um, you know, there's only so many kicks at the cans you get as an NHL player, and if if this one doesn't work out in San Jose. You know, do you start looking at, oh, maybe this Ryan Donato, maybe he goes to Europe, stuff like that. There are a couple other guys in the league that have been getting kicks at the can, notably, you know, speaking of the Minnesota Wild, notably Alex Galchenyuk. Maybe, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him here in free agency. So, but I don't know, with Ryan Donato, I hope he works, it works out for him here in San Jose. And with the Sharks, they... Are, are they, are they going to be rebuilding after last year or are they just going to be looking at that as, uh, I think it was a fluke, Let, let's just move on and I think we got a good team. I personally think they have a good team. I mean, I was stunned that where, where they finished in the standings. But, you know, part of the reason they finished where they are in the standings is, is goaltending. And that's why they acquired Devin Dubnik also in exchange for a 2022 fifth round pick. I think they, both these trades, I mean, I personally think San Jose wins them both. I think they're low-risk trades. If Donato doesn't turn out, I mean, you didn't give up a whole heck of a lot for him. If Dubnik doesn't turn out, you didn't give up a whole heck of a lot for him. I mean, I think with Dubnik, I think, is he a guy that, you know, he's obviously not getting any younger. So was last year, oh, uh, he's starting to decline? Or was it just Minnesota's not very good? I mean, or is it a combination of both for Dubnik? Does he ha still have it? Can he regain his form that he had a few years ago? When he first came to the Wild especially, I mean, he was just, that's where his career turned around. We know, obviously, in Edmonton, he really struggled. He had a brief stint with the Arizona Coyotes. I think that's where he kind of got his game on track, but then it really, it really took off in uh, Minnesota for sure when he got traded there at the deadline of 2015. 
can he regain that form with San Jose? We'll find out. Until then, um, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon.